と、uh, right, guys, come here, move down a bit. Uh, Henry, Henry's all smiling, let's move down a little bit, move down, move down, come in, gather yourselves around, Rachel, down that side, gents, oh, you're not blocking the ball, let me shut this, that's it, Rachel, you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. Right, ladies and gents, this morning's briefing, there's a few other bits I need to mention, but let's go on to the main standard briefing. Right, so morning everyone, your team's in today as follows, your supervisors on security, you've got Rachel on security today, and on cleaning you've got a course mark. Uh, events and promotions, you've got an event on this weekend, the event is called Morris Dancing Sticks Craft. That's why it's on your craft event, like the one we just had uh, three weeks ago, so that's going to happen on Friday, sorry Saturday. Sorry. Who's working Saturday? Uh, Are you on? Brilliant. Um, so yeah, it'll be, again, I'll, I'll go through Mark with you in terms of requirements of uh, tables and chairs and what have you, let's have a look. Uh, so yeah, again, uh, seven tables, probably not need that much, it's probably going to be similar to a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Pop-up shop, um, again, uh, I'll confirm later on whether or not that needs a clean on Sunday. I'm not sure whether the uh, tenant is in for one week or two weeks, but I will check later on. Okay. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Contractors, only two contractors on time. Today we've got St. John's Ambulance, they are on Mersey Square. Yeah, so they are authorised to be there. I'm not sure if they're there today, because when I spoke to them yesterday, I did tell you back tomorrow, they said, I was supposed to be, or they might not. But if you, yeah, but if you see them there today, they might come in a bit later. Yeah, or they might not. If they don't, if they don't turn up, let me know if they don't turn up here. Uh, let the control room know. Because if you know, they are booked in. So if they don't come, then we need to report back. Back to more, and then more with less than But they may be there. If they are there, they are authorised to be there. Uh, uniform, um, guys, mainly, if anybody needs polo shirts, uh, Mark, I need to speak to you and Mr. Moore. The rest of you, anybody who needs polo shirts, please let the control room know today. There will be a list in here. All we, all we need is your sizes, yes? Um, so let, let the control room know today, please. Ideally, before you leave this briefing, uh, we need to get them ordered. Andy's on site today, so we need to give him that list. Uh, equipment, consumables, everyone just basic stuff. Some of this stuff is repetitive, and it's just to make sure that you know you get into a habit to a point where you come to a briefing and you know exactly what I'm going to say. I want everybody just to get into the habit, keeping your radio on the correct channels, uh, when you're attending an interview <coughs> or when you're dealing with, uh, you know, um, spillages or cleaning issues, make sure you don't actually accidentally knock your radio. Check it every now and then, okay? Just get on the right channel. Uh, yeah, that's that. Quick money. Management, you've got Andy and myself on site today. Uh, CBRE, I'm not in Victoria yet, so Moy is on site, Graham is on site, and Tom and Vicky are on site. Any questions so far? What a nice briefing. Good briefing. Very good when there's no questions. Uh, WhatsApp group. How is everybody finding the WhatsApp group? Is everybody on the WhatsApp group? Yeah? Your agent's on. I still need to get your hands up. Everybody else? Okay. No, no questions? I'm not seeing any silly messages or any, you know, horrible messages on there. So keep it, keep it as that. Um, like I said, just the WhatsApp group is for updates that we have every day uh, for updates on could be rotors, could be jobs that you're doing that's the kind of stuff that will be on there uh, so yeah, just continue to, to respect that Miss collections, uh, for example on sanitary bins please report ASAP the same day to the control room okay, so if there's any miscollections, collections let the control room know and they will escalate it uh, and that includes the bins by the way which are collected on Tuesdays and Fridays yeah, so if they, again if they are not collected let us know uh, and just check, keep checking those bins, make sure it's not overflowing. Um, tenant issues, any issues throughout the day, or if a tenant has not opened, uh, please report this to the control room before 9.30 a.m. Has that been done this morning? Yeah, I know Tammy, you're very good at that. Yeah. yeah. So any, anything like that, uh, and, and yourself more. So anything like that, please report it. Very important so the control room can make the client aware. That's something that we need to do consistently. And it's not just security staff. You might be patrolling at the other side of the center or back of house, uh, you know, security. But if cleaning staff are on the mall and you see somebody not <coughs> open, let them know, yeah? Try and increase that communication between cleaning and security because you are all one team. Um, and as far as tenants are concerned, uh, tenant issues, we had an issue yesterday, and I don't mind sharing this with the cleaning team here, with clerks. 
Now we had an issue with Clarks whereby um, there was a disgruntled customer who had an issue with a transaction or something, none of our business, so I won't go into detail. He threatened to come back and smash the windows of the shop. Uh, now, Tambia and Tawseef uh, and Mr. Singh, that's it, did a brilliant job with that yesterday in providing that presence. I want that to continue today. I did go into the shop on, on numerous occasions. Uh, the communication from Rachel in the control room was brilliant. And I did advise the tenant to log it with the police because if this guy, chances are he's not going to come back, but if he comes back and damages the windows, at least it's reporting to the police. So they've done that. So what I want is the guard who is present around spectators, try and position yourself around clocks. Yeah, so you're you're there if they need you, and you can also keep an eye on walk on the other side. Yeah? Is it okay yeah. Um yesterday as well, just to make you aware, we had an issue in the three store. Uh, very strange one actually. They had a guy who went in there with a G4S shirt, uh, G4S lanyard. Okay. You can get both of them on eBay. Yeah? Or you can, if you're very clever, you can make an ID badge. Yeah. I'm not telling you to make an ID badge, I'm just telling you it's something that can be done. In the criminal world today, nowadays, criminals <coughs> have a qualification in what they do. Yeah, they are very good. Uh, so he turned up at the three store and he said, uh, I'm from the alarm monitoring company and I've come to get some keys from your shop. He asked for keys from the three store. Yeah, this is mainly for security. Okay. And um, you know, he said, we've got a fob, but there's no keys. So we, we need some keys. And luckily, Paul, the manager at the time, said, no, we're not doing any keys. And he went away. This guy had black jeans on and white trainers. Mm. He wasn't in full G4S gear. So we suspect it could be fraud. It could be a criminal gang who wanted keys. But they said, no, we don't have any keys. And they reported it to me straight away. Uh, Rachel put it on Stoner. And I went to CEE, O2, and Vodafone and make them aware as well. Yeah. So just increase that presence around the phone check today. Yeah. And if you see anybody in a G4S <coughs> uniform, you yeah. need to make the control room aware straight away. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Any questions? No. no, no, no. Okay, in terms of non emergency tenants, um, I just put here, let me give you an issue for with tenants outside of my area. Yeah, if there are any issues with tenants outside of our area, like Costa, the Brown, and the other side, just let the control room know. Yeah, if you're unsure, let the control room know. Even with cleaning staff, if you're approached by any non tenants uh, with a query, direct them to the control room, radio the control room. Yeah, one thing I noticed, and I must say this today on the radios, the radio communication has increased, it's brilliant. Everybody's talking more on the radio. The problem I've got is, and this is not a, a negative uh, comment, on the radios we need to keep our sentences short, sweet, to the point. Yeah? No long sentences, because it could be a, an emergency situation, it could be an important issue, and the controller or myself need to, may need to reply to you quickly. So what I would say is before you transmit any messages over the radios, think of that message in your head, you know, minimize it, summarize it, and then send it over the radio. Just keep it short and sweet, yeah? Uh, radios should always be short and sweet. As I've said before, excuse my language, and we have got a lot better at it, when you're uh, reporting uh, pigeon mess, that's exactly what it should be called. Pigeon mess, yeah, not pigeon <laughs> shit. Yeah? We should not use those words on the radio, yeah? So, pigeon mess. Please try and uh, get used to call signs. I appreciate it's early days with the implementation of call signs. So if you cannot remember the call signs, I don't mind using names. Uh, what I don't want to hear on the radio is pal, may, bro. So he's on the radio. Uh, it's, you've got to keep it professional because the client has the radio on all the time. And that includes more in Victoria. They have a switched on radio on their desk in Brave. And if we're using words that we shouldn't be, uh, you know, the other one, very, <laughs> the other one which is very important, uh, this briefing is important that you, you know, you, you all have a bit of a laugh, you know, but, but it is an important briefing. The other one is if you go into the toilet, I'm going to the toilet. No, I'm Pop just going offline. Because yeah. I'm sure none of you, me included, would not want to be sat on a toilet being radioed. Yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't want to be disturbed when you're yeah. in the toilet. Yeah. So don't say I'm going toilet. <coughs> yeah. And you know, part way through your transaction in the toilet. <laughs> transaction. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I can only see that word. You're getting a call on the radio. So don't, do not use that on the radio. Yeah? <coughs> Control, I'm going offline. Yeah. Then the controller knows not to disturb that person. Let them do what they want to do in peace. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, okay. Next one. Uniform inspection. I've been made aware by the. Well, I won't say by who. I've been made aware that trainers are no longer permitted as okay. part of uniform. So if anybody's wearing trainers, please do not wear trainers. Again, it's got to be black boots, and ideally cleaning stuff, especially when you're working with variable stuff. It's got to be safety shoes. Uh, so please look into that. If you're wearing them today and you know the next few days, it's fine. 
because I'm not. I don't expect you to go and get the choose right now. I am. I am having a conversation at background. Don't don't hold me to this about what we can do to support you with that. I, I am having that uh, conversation. The problem we have is that there's nothing uh, been agreed in the budget for the company to provide safety shoes or, or boots. But again, I'm not promising anything. That is something I'm trying to work towards changing for you guys. Okay. So, uh, any questions? No. Two more things from me. What I'm going to do is, I'm just going to pass this on very quickly. Who's working Saturday? Pretty much everybody. You working Saturday? You working Saturday, Henry? Yeah. Yeah? Ready? You working Saturday? No? Right, so we'll start off with you. Have a quick read of that and pass it around uh, while I carry on talking. That's just details of the event which is happening on the Saturday. And then there's two more things that I need to cover with you, and then we're all good. Yeah, so while you're passing that around, uh, try and keep your ears open as well, guys. Um, two things I need to mention, very, very important. Super drug, uh, security, and cleaning. I think this uh, you know, involves you all. Outside super drug, they've been having a, a persistent sleeper outside their unit, and it's mainly first thing in the morning. It's causing a lot of issues. Were they there this morning, you tell me? No. Brilliant. Yeah. Excellent. So it's causing a lot of issues because every other day the person's there, it's causing problems uh, for the staff trying to enter the unit because if it's female staff, uh, you know, some might kick him and say move, but some might think, no, I don't want, even males, you know, if it's a male member of staff, you might feel a bit vulnerable dealing with it. Uh, so, and also the manager I spoke to yesterday in Super Rogue said, you know, he was struggling to open their shutter. That's not acceptable. So what I would say is in the morning, whoever is in the control room, Rachel, yourself, mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, you know, I know that the 7 o'clock person in the morning has a lot of work to do. He's got to do a full fact patrol, he's got to make a lot of observations, so he can't be everywhere, yeah? Whoever that may be, but generally it's you, uh, So even with yourself, just the thing, if you're in in the morning on a 7 o'clock shift and you're doing a full fact patrol, the controller has a key job to monitor that area outside super drug. And if they see any issues there, uh, you know, um, somebody on a mattress sleeping, they will contact the security guard who's on the 7-3 shift. That 7-3 guard will go to deal with that, what I would also request while that's happening, and I choose my words carefully here, cleaning team. Whoever is on in the morning, uh, you know, if it's an issue in the morning and there's a cleaner knocking about, I would expect that cleaner to go and assist the security guard. But listen very carefully to what I'm about to say. You're not security guards, you don't perform any security function, you're stood behind the security guard while he's dealing with it, just as an extra body deterrent. So if that person, that sleeper, you know, moves his doobie and thinks two people there and he's out, it's that deterrent, it's extra support. Yeah, so we need to put extra emphasis. I don't want to see any mattresses out there. If there's any mattresses out there, you need to let me know. Let the control room know. Yeah, let the control room know first. I don't think you even want to give us any consistency. Yeah, and you know that's what generally that's what sleepers use as their um, you know uh, sleeping um, tool. What do you want to call it? Outlets. Yeah, exactly. And like I said, you know, and, and, and during the day, we need to make sure that we're keeping on top of that area, yeah, make it clean. I know. I can eat clean straight away. Good, good. Good, that's fine. And one last thing I want to mention, guys, is look, there's, I, I always reiterate this, in the staff room, there's a lot of uh, uh, facilities being provided by the client. We want to try and maintain that. Uh, you know, we, we don't want anything to stop because it's nice for everybody to, to walk there, have the meal and sit in, you know, relaxed manner in an environment and have that food. But in the last 48 hours, uh, I just want to remind everybody uh, that in a toaster, you should only put bread in there. That's it. Toasters equals bread, not chicken strips. Yeah. So somebody, I mean, it might not be anybody here, but it might be. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. You absolutely must not put anything else in a toaster. If you need, if you, need, if, if you fancy toast with chicken strips on it, I don't care. You can put, as far as I'm saying, you can put you know, dairy milk chocolate on there. I'm not really bothered, but do not stick that in the toaster. Yeah? In the toaster, it should be bread only. Because if we get continually, over the next two weeks, I'm gonna monitor this. I shouldn't have to monitor this. I've got other things to be dealing with. But if I hear any more reports of chicken strips or anything else stuck in that toaster, I'm gonna take the toaster away. And I don't wanna do that. Yeah, because I like a slice of toast in the morning. <coughs> Is that okay? Yeah. Everybody happy? Um, can I just add? Yeah. There's two homeless people looking for one of them is called Josh. If I say it's got to be a two-man approach, it's a two-man approach. I've seen that Josh take a six-foot-three man down on his own. 
It's an under what it looks like, a little wavy thing. Okay. But it's an under what it is, a nasty piece of work. So don't worry, you wonder, oh, I'll saw him out. Because it was all happen, guys. Yeah. You're, you're okay, if it's two, if it's two, that's a whole different ball game with him. You'll notice a change of attitude and he'll tend to just walk off. But if it's one on one, so just to support what Rachel just said there, what I would say is, guys, if you're dealing with anybody who's homeless who has a history of aggression, whether it be it verbal or physical, do not deal with it on your own anyway. Yeah, and, and you know, as far as I'm concerned, if you know somebody's aggressive and you're going to deal with them, uh, deal with them in a safe manner, and all three of you go. I'm not bothered. Yeah. Uh, simple as that. Could you say to you, Paramount? Yeah, uh, that's it. Okay. Yeah, and that's I mean, what you... yeah, yeah, the likes of Luke and that. We all know, we know them well, and they're generally not aggressive. But yeah, that one in the black. With the greasy hair and the greasy yeah, beard, yeah. he's nasty and he will hurt you. Okay. Give him a chance, he will hurt you. Yeah. Perfect. Anything else? Yeah. No. Okay, fine. guys and um, girls, uh, you are all free to go, uh, with the exception of Mark and Jeremy. Okay. Have a beautiful day. Gentlemen, that's a mile. Yeah, uh, okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to know this somewhere.